from the expansion of the Hong Kong Museum of Art to the new M Plus and the Hong Kong Palace Museum, the art scene in Hong Kong has definitely been thriving in recent years. Our city has developed into an important center for international art and cultural exchanges, and Christie's is committed to promoting this exchange between Chinese and Western markets. They bring art pieces collected from all over the world to Hong Kong, attracting collectors and art enthusiasts from around the globe. Here at the Auction Preview, it doesn't feel like we're in an Auction Preview exhibition, but rather it's like visiting an art museum. Apart from being able to appreciate various art pieces, you can also exchange ideas with seasoned art connoisseurs and collectors in the art community. Hi, Christian. It's good so morning, nice to Grace. meet you. Good morning, Grace. Good morning. Good morning. A pleasure and a joy. Thank you so much. Now, I see this incredible piece of work behind mm. us. This is by Jeff Koons. It's Correct. called Sacred Hearts. Correct. Can you give me a little bit more of a background story behind this piece? Yeah, with so much joy and pleasure. So Jeff Koons is the first time only bringing Jeff Koons to Asia and this Sacred Heart, which was produced in 1994, 90, and, uh, 2005, mm -hmm. has never been at auction. So it's fresh, fresh, fresh. Wow. How it's been created is literally an ode to his son mm -hmm. uh, who was living in Italy at the time. Jeff Koons is one of the most celebrated American artists and in 2019 we sold a sculpture by him for 90 million US dollars, which became the most expensive sculpture by living artists. So, first time to Asia, first time of this culture to be sold. Unique sculptures in five different colors. The other four are in very prominent American and Asian collections. So it's a celebration of love and of life. As we know, Hong Kong is a central hub for international art. Will we be expecting any legendary artists this time at the auction? Grace, you are in front of one of them. That's why so, I walked towards here. <laughs> so this is Jean-Michel Basquiat. It's called Black from 1986. Um, interestingly enough, we sold three masterpieces of Basquiat last year in 2021 in Hong Kong. Oh, wow. It was The Warrior from 1982, it sold for 40 million US dollars. And then in May, the Xerox Face from 82 again for 30 million. And then Donut Revenge. And guess what? Your channel interviewed us in front of the Donut Revenge on the 1st of December last wow. year, which sold for 20 million. Million. With this Jean-Michel Basquiat is one of the most celebrated. He passed away in 1988, but he tells the history of black American being in New York in 1980s. Um, and this one is kind of a morph between a painting and a sculpture. And is the very important great provenance and is the cover of the catalogue raisonné. The catalogue raisonné is the book which brings together all the works for the artist. So it's wow. the cover of the book. And you say that this is art and a sculpture because of its 3D? Because you've got the sculpture element, the 3D, right. the sculpture element, the picture element, the painting, and then you have these cubes, yes. Absolutely, one of a kind. One of a kind. <laughs> After seeing several masterpieces by Western artists, let's also talk about the talent in this region. Asian artists have been receiving a lot more attention as well as interest in the recent years. What are your thoughts on this? My thoughts is nothing is uh, random, to be honest with you, because the history of art is like a river of thoughts, yeah? yeah? It keeps on flowing. So think of Japan in 1960s and 70s, Gutai Group. Mm -hmm. Think of Korea in 1970s, the Monoha Group. And then think of all the Chinese and Hong Kong, the same in 70s, like Chu Te Chun and Zawuki going to Paris in the same time. So it's never random. It's been happening for many, many, many generations. And then we arrive at this extraordinary lady yeah. who's 94 years old, the Ayoko Sama. Wow. Uh, so she's born in Japan and then she's born in a nursery, plant farm. Uh, so all the flowers is the childhood memories. She goes to America for 10 years, she comes back to Japan. So her paintings are all about the memories. Asian artworks and collectibles, I know that there is a rare and precious moon flask from the Qing Dynasty here. It is said that this flask was a gift from Emperor Qianlong to his 15th son, representing a father's love for his son. Wow, look! 
I found it. I heard that this moon flask was very difficult to make. With very intricate details on the colorful enamel dragon pattern, even the slightest imperfection would have ruined the entire flask and rendered it a flawed product. The decoration on this flask is known as the Emperor Instructing the Crown Prince. Why, you ask? Well, if you take a closer look, you'll see that the two dragons appear to be facing each other like a father teaching his child. Most of us know that there is a no-touching rule when it comes to appreciating artworks. To allow people a more interactive viewing experience, Christie's has specially incorporated AR technology into these traditional artworks. As you can see, it's like interacting with a dragon in real time. How cool is that? There really are a lot of auction exhibits here. Now, whether it's works by internationally renowned artists or promising young stars, you can find them here. And Christie's actually holds two auctions a year, so if you happen to have missed it this time, don't worry. The next one is right around the corner. I'll see you then.